Media Center for a debate between the two Democratic candidates for state representative in the 1st Barnstable District, Steve Leibovich and Josh Mason. If we can welcome them. <laughs> My name is Bob Samalock, and I am the chair of the Dennis Democratic Town Committee. Dennis is pleased to be your host for today's debate and to have partnered with the other towns in the district, uh, Barnstable with Chair Mary Mahone, with Brewster with Katie Jacobus, <coughs> in Yarmouth with Bob Bizador, as well as the Cape and Islands Democrat Council, led by Director Sandy Milano, have helped us bring this event to you today. I want to be sure and thank the people at the Cape Media Center, Executive Director Terry Duenas, and News Director, our moderator, Sarah Colvin. They have been very helpful and a pleasure to, to work with. Our thanks to the volunteers today. We can't do it without you for stepping up and stepping in. A special thanks to Katie Jacobus from Brewster, who's been a wonderful partner in making this happen. And of course, thanks to the two candidates. It takes courage to step up and run, and we thank them for doing this and are grateful for their efforts. Just to point out, two years ago, we had no Democratic candidate for state rep. The rep got a pass. Not this time. We have two strong candidates, and one of them will be taking him on, and I know the other will, will help. A lot has changed in two years. We are seeing a surge of involvement and commitment by Democrats across the Cape and Islands. In Dennis alone, we've added a dozen new members to our committee. One third of the entire Cape delegation to the June convention were first timers. The Cape and Islands Democrat Council trained over 30 uh, fellows. The activist flame has been lit on the Cape. It, it is heartening to see people that believe democratic values and policies can make a difference in our communities and are willing to get involved. Keep it up. So I turn it over to our moderator, Sarah Bolton. Thank you. Well, thank you, Bob, and thank you to all uh, of you for joining us here at the Cape Cod Community Media Center. As Bob said, my name is Sarah Colvin. I'm the news director here at the Cape Cod Community Media Center. I uh, operate a weekly television news program called Cape Media News, and I am thrilled uh, to be here moderating this debate today with these two fine candidates. Uh, as Bob said, it takes a lot of courage and a lot of effort uh, to run, especially against a strong candidate. And I love seeing um, not only a Democratic candidate, but also a Democratic primary. This is great uh, for civic engagement and for uh, um, our, our local government. Uh, it's, it's good stuff. So uh, this is how the debate is going to run. Um, each of the candidates is going to be allowed a three-minute opening statement. Uh, the order was determined by a coin flip. We did prior to broadcast, uh, which Josh has won, uh, so we'll get to that in just a second. Um, then we will have a list of questions, and I will say that the questions came from the community, um, submitted online and sent to Bob, and he sent them to us, and we put them together um, for you, so covering a, a nice large range of local important issues here on Cape Cod. Uh, when we start the questions, each candidate will have two minutes to respond. Uh, they will be able to request a rebuttal uh, of one minute, and then we'll move on to the next question, have a two minute closing statement, and hopefully we'll be able to get all of this accomplished in an hour. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just to introduce you uh, to the <coughs> candidates, uh, to my left, uh, Steve Leibowitz. Uh, Steve was born and raised in the Boston area. He's a graduate of UMass Amherst uh, for an undergrad in Northeastern for his master's. He and his family moved to the Cape in 1995. Good decision uh, to move here to Cape Cod. Uh, Steve has been long active with the Cape Cod Democrats, has served as chair of the Brewster Democratic Town Committee, executive board member of the CIDC, a member of the Massachusetts Democratic State Committee, twice elected a delegate to the Democratic National Convention, also a former member of the Brewster School Committee and Affordable Housing Partnership. A proud father of two daughters, Dylan, 24, who lives and works here on the Cape, and Shana, who's 20, and she is a student at UMass Amherst. Uh, to my right, Josh Mason was born in Houston, Texas, but raised here in the first Barnes School District graduated from Dennis Yarmouth High School in 2000 and studied film production, so I'll bet you feel right at home here in the studio, <laughs> uh, at Hofstra University in New York, worked in LA on projects like the Ellen DeGeneres Show, Fever Pitch, and the VH1 Music Awards. He moved home in 2014, establishing himself as a beverage director at a local restaurant and has since been an active member of the Cape and Islands Democratic Council, as well as both the presidential, uh, well as the Dennis and Yarmouth Democratic Committees. Uh, he's worked on three presidential campaigns 
campaigns, helped to get some of our brightest and best local officials elected. He's committed to stronger community relations through political activism. In 2017, Joshua Josh decided it was time to step up and be the young, energetic, and fresh voice the first Barnes School District needs to serve its people responsible, responsibly, transparently, and effectively as state representative. Those are the two candidates, and I will now allow them to introduce themselves and give opening statements. Josh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank the uh, town council members, uh, town committee members, excuse me, for uh, working together to put this uh, event together today. Uh, Sandy Milano, the CIDC, um, Bob Samalik, uh, everybody here at the Cape Media Center. We really appreciate this. This is uh, a wonderful opportunity for uh, Steve and I to both uh, discuss some of the more uh, critical issues that face us here in uh, the first Barnstable district. Um, so I myself, uh, to sort of lead away from what Sarah was talking about, my biography here, um, I'm, I will say this, that, you know, as children, we're sort of taught to, to think big, to dream and to take chances. And then something happens called life. And life kind of gets, gets in the way and messes with us. And then we end up forgetting about where we came from and where we all started and how we used to think and the things we used to do. Well, in one of his most prolific songs, John Lennon said, you may say, I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. I live under those core beliefs. I want to go back to dreaming big, to taking chances and taking risks. And as your state representative, I will do that. We will think bold. We will think ambitious. We will go beyond the limits of what people tell us. People have established as parameters for us. I don't believe that there are parameters. I believe that we can govern in a limitless society within reason and within the law. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Now, Steve. Great. Thank you. I think all the thanks have been uh, taken care of between Bob and, uh, and Josh. Um, it's a wonderful um, um, organization, uh, CIDC, our uh, local Democratic town committees, and Cape Media for, uh, for putting this together for us. We really appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk to folks that are in the live audience and folks that uh, are watching us now uh, on television, and we'll, uh, we'll be watching this in the next, uh, next week and a half. Uh, as, uh, as I've gone out and campaigned, um, We've gotten a lot of really positive response from the community, from Democrats and from unenrolled. And sometimes people don't always jive. It's like, this first Barnstable, am I in first Barnstable? What district am, uh, am I in? And I've come to explain, and it's been a very good uh, touch point for people, is I'm, I'm running for Cleon Turner's seat once removed, is really where we're trying to, uh, to go with that, is to try and pick up a lot of those democratic values that, uh, that we have. I'm looking forward to having the discussion today and future discussions with people about the future of First Barnstable and, uh, and Cape Cod. Um, I, I agree with Josh. We, uh, we do have to dream big, and that's something that I have done since the time I was an undergraduate at UMass Amherst, 19 years old, and ran for successfully a seat at town meeting at Amherst. I've always been involved and engaged in my community and working to make things better. For government, being able to reflect the best of what our community does here is really what I hope to, uh, to bring out. And that's something that I've not only seen, but in terms of my own personal upbringing um, also. I was one of uh, four boys with a single mother. Uh, we lived in the projects in Boston and subsidized housing in the, uh, in the Brookline area. Uh, I can remember going with my mother to food programs and hoping to carry back milk or cheese or whatever happened to, uh, to be there to help us out. And when I got through high school, UMass Amherst was the affordable option for me. Through state scholarships, through Pell Grant, uh, I was able to get an education and better myself that way. And as Sarah mentioned, I later was able to get a master's degree at, at, uh, at Northeastern. So having that type of support coming from the public uh, has been immeasurable in terms of my life. And I've always felt a, a commitment to give back uh, to that. Uh, so, I look, as I said, I look forward to this discussion, and uh, thank you for being here. 
All right, well, thank you both. And uh, we will start in with the questions. So uh, first question, the legislature ended this year's session on June 30th with several important matters unresolved, including some important pending bills, specifically a long overdue reform of the education funding formula and a housing bill that would have had a major impact in our district. How would you work, and we'll start with you, Steve, uh, to ensure that the legislature passes these important bills that directly impact our district in a timely manner? Sure, thank you for the question. Uh, it's critically important to have a state rep who is going to be a leader in these issues and who understands these issues, uh, specifically in terms of education. Uh, as was mentioned before, as a member of the Brewster uh, School Committee. So I understand the budgets, I understand how uh, difficult it has been over uh, a number of years in terms of managing those budgets. Um, I acknowledge the great work of all of our school committees here in the district and the teachers and the parents in providing a, a, uh, a great program. Um, so I understand that going forward, and I think I can work with our legislatures to help communicate that message as to what's, uh, what's needed. There is a lot of good momentum, actually, on Beacon Hill to see something done in terms of the foundation budget. But I think we need to go even further than foundation budget reform. Uh, we need to get into reimbursement for regional transportation. We need to look at the reimbursement for uh, when students leave for charter schools. Uh, we need to look at the reimbursement rate for circuit breaker. If you look at the amount that all those take in, uh, it's more than what the town of Yarmouth taxpayers had to do in an override this past spring. So I'm going to be a forceful uh, voice on that. In terms of housing, uh, I support Representative Peek was uh, uh, instrumental in filing that bill. I look forward to working with her and bringing that bill back up. Um, and again, as I mentioned from my own background, I know the value of providing affordable housing and workforce, uh, workforce housing. So I look forward to working on her with, uh, with uh, zoning reform, uh, accessory dwellings, um, and also providing additional training for our planning boards to do a better job. Thank you very much. Josh. Sure. Um, so education is something that's near and dear to me, especially here on uh, Cape Cod. I'm a beneficiary of the Dennis Yarmouth School District. Um, and having come back to Cape Cod after so many years and seeing where the public school system stands, I'm very concerned. I'm concerned that we have put our focus into the administrative side of the education system. We've priced out our teachers. Uh, we've cut librarians. We've cut aides. We've taken education out of the classroom and we put the money into the wrong place. Um, what I'd like to see is that money be redirected. I'd like to see us cut administration and add more aides and add more teachers and add more support, bring mental health in. Uh, these are all important elements to the success of our children and giving them a world-class education here on Cape Cod. Um, I also feel that, you know, I agree with Steve, that the foundation budget does have to be worked, reworked on a state level, as well as the Chapter 70 formula. I think we don't need to be teaching towards standardized testing anymore, such as MCAS. We could save that $32 million and put that back into the public education system. I think that's really important as well. All students learn on individualized levels, and we need to teach to their strengths and not their weaknesses. And I feel like we're, 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 handcuffing, we're, we're handcuffing the educators themselves, uh, as well as the students not giving them the education that they deserve. Instead, we're giving them a watered down public uh, education. Uh, so, you know, that's very important to me. Uh, as far as housing goes on the Cape, again, that goes hand in hand with the education issue. We are pricing out our teachers. Our teachers cannot afford to live here. We do need to provide more affordable housing. We need to provide more workforce housing. We need to have more equity-based programs as well. Uh, you know, so that people can work towards purchasing a home. We need to work on zoning laws, accessory dwelling, uh, and the list goes on and on. And I will be a fierce advocate for the education and the housing sector for Cape Cod up on Beacon Hill. Thank you very much. Any rebuttal at all? A, a, a brief thing. Uh, Josh, when, when, we were in, uh, when you were in Brewster mm -hmm. uh, last month, you made reference to vertical workforce housing. Yes. Could you... Uh, explain where that fits in with our local communities? Yeah, absolutely. So unfortunately, we live on Cape Cod, which is surrounded by water. We don't live in suburbia where we have land that extends out further and further, so we can't move to more inexpensive areas. Unfortunately, we're being pinched into the middle. So the only way to go is up. So we have to look at developing uh, you know, uh, environmentally friendly, mid-rise uh, vertical housing. That's the workforce housing, that's the affordable housing that I'm referring to, and that has to be integrated and peppered in uh, with all the different levels of our communities, not just the affluent, not just the Section 8 area. It has to be uh, a part of every, every area in this community. Um, so, so that's kind of what I was referring to when I had when mentioned that. 
Okay, just wanted to get some clarification as, of course. as to what mid-level and vertical sure. is sure. in terms of our towns. I think densities is, is essentially the answer, uh, you know, to, to being able to house people outside of the second, uh, the second homeowner's market. Great. Okay. So next question. Uh, many progressive, we'll start with you on this one, Josh. Sure. Uh, many progressive programs were counting on the passage of the fair share amendment, mm -hmm. so-called millionaire's tax, yep. uh, to provide new revenue for critical areas, again, like education. With the fair share amendment no longer on the ballot or being discussed, uh, how would you cover that $1 billion shortfall that is needed to fund things like education, health care, and infrastructure? Sure. Um, well, I, I think we, you know, uh, let me bring it back down here to, uh, to, to the Cape, okay. Uh, we've obviously got a wastewater crisis here in Cape Cod that we're dealing with. Uh, we've been squabbling back and forth on a regional level with this wastewater crisis, uh, you know, and, and we've, we've really gotten nowhere with it. I hate to say it, but we really haven't. Um, what I would like to see happen is we get up to, to Beacon Hill, and yes, the, the, the millionaires, the, the fair share tax did not pass, and that's unfortunate. Um, creating revenue for projects like that locally, because I like to keep things local here. Um, I'm looking at the transportation sector. I had proposed an idea uh, to put, we've got the technology for this, to put cameras on our bridges, for instance. Uh, we take place, uh, pictures of the license plates, send people to build, to $3 surcharge. We do this everywhere else in Massachusetts. There's no reason why we shouldn't do this here. We've got 50,000 cars on average between Memorial Day and Labor Day that cross our bridges, and just think about the revenue we can create. Now, I don't want to impact people locally. I'm looking at doing uh, resident and business exemptions for that so that we don't impact our uh, our citizens, our residents here on Cape Cod. Um, in addition to that, we got to look at taxing other areas such as Uber, uh, rather than increasing uh, property taxes and taxes on individuals. So I'm looking into the transportation sector right now. Then there's also the other issue that's on the table, which we're, we're fighting each other on right now, is the, can the issue of recreational cannabis. That's another uh, area that you know we can generate a lot of tax taxable revenue through, and it's something that I think is just common sense that we need to be uh, to be really focused on and generating some uh, additional revenue here for the state. So, and that's where I stand. Great, Steve, for you. Great, thank you. Uh, and I agree with you on recreational uh, cannabis, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been involved with the efforts in, uh, in Brewster, and, and I applaud the work of our citizens there in Brewster in terms of putting together a, a responsible plan to do that that will, uh, that will benefit uh, everybody. Specifically in terms of the fair share amendment, um, I supported that. Um, I would have uh, absolutely had voted that and uh, uh, encouraged other people to do the same. That said, it doesn't remove the responsibility of the legislature from enacting additional measures there. The items that were going to be on the ballot, um, the paid family medical leave, uh, fight for 15, through the pressure of that petition process, the legislature eventually acted on that. We can't afford to have the legislature wait any longer. There's no reason why, and I would advocate and push for the legislature to enact a uh, fair share amendment at the state level to get us away from a regressive flat tax and into a more progressive taxation uh, process that, uh, uh, that we desperately need in terms of the revenue, not only for education, but infrastructure. Great. Uh, any rebuttal at all? All right. I have add. Moving on to the third question. Um, again, we're talking about taxes, of course. The legislature recently passed a bill allowing the state to start taxing short-term rentals. Uh, that'll go into effect in 2019. Uh, the bill includes an additional two and three quarters percent tax that will establish the Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund. That's a dedicated funding stream um, for the region's multi-billion dollar wastewater cleanup efforts. Of course, wastewater cleanup, one of the hugest issues on the Cape. Where do you stand, Steve, on this issue? Uh, wastewater or the tax? Uh, the tax. tax. <laughs> the, two, the, the two and a quarter tax. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm absolutely in, uh, in favor of that. Um, I applaud our entire delegation for their uh, work on this. Um, it creates a dedicated revenue stream for one of the most significant issues that's uh, facing us uh, right now. So I have absolutely no issue whatsoever with adding that uh, surcharge on uh, for our protection. Great. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to break here with, uh, with Steve on this. Um, I don't fully agree with the, uh, the rental tax the way it's currently crafted. My concern is here is our citizens in the 1st Barnstable District and Cape Wide for that matter. Uh, while I do applaud the work of Representative uh, Peak and Senator Sear, um, I do think that you know, we have to look at how legislation impacts everybody as a whole and not just one area of people. So we do have two different, two different classes of people here in Cape Cod when it comes to, to this uh, piece of legislation. 
We've got the second homeowners that specifically buy properties here in Cape Cod as investment properties. They are used to create, to create a stream of revenue for them. And these people are generally uh, listed in the affluent category. Then we have people who actually live here on a year-round basis who are struggling to make ends meet. Those people rent their houses up because they have no choice. Now this piece of legislation impacts the, both of those people the exact same way. So I think we need to look at this piece of legislation and figure out how we can amend it to make it work so it's not impacting our, our local residents that are relying on that additional income through those houses, uh, through, the, uh, through the house, the rentals, excuse me. Um, so in, in, in that respect, um, I, you know, I, I understand, I, I, I like the idea of the tax. I just think that uh, there needs to be some more specific language in there. And in respect to what goes towards wastewater, I'd like to see more uh, specific language uh, in respect to going to a wastewater, a state wastewater committee, or uh, to the wastewater project itself, uh, rather than to the water improvement fund, uh, because to me that's just more engineering and research. Uh, we've already wasted four to five million dollars on, on wastewater research in itself. I mean, look at the cigarette tax. Where did that money go? I just want to. I just want to follow the paper trail, and I think that's one thing that you know we don't do well. Uh, and I'm not blaming anyone here in, in local government. It's federal government too. Is that mismanagement? That's something we don't do well in this country. So, okay. uh, make a brief rebuttal point uh, on that. Um, you know, that, that tax piece, um, it's not something that affects the person that's doing the renting, it's the person that comes down here. And if we're talking about a, uh, a couple of a percent in addition, if you're talking about 150 a night, there's three or four dollars um, added to that. That is not a deal breaker for people coming down here. Great. So, question number four. Uh, the Cape continues to age at a faster pace than the rest of the state. Uh, statistics indicate that we are continuing to lose our younger folks, um, you know, to challenges that we have talked about, the cost of housing, the low salaries, um, you know, it, it is a challenge for young people to live and thrive here. What will you do, and we'll start with you on this one, Josh, to help reverse this trend to retain our vital young people? I appreciate that question, Sarah, because this is actually the epicenter of my entire message and my campaign as a whole here. Uh, it's creating opportunities for, you know, and, 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 and quashing the, uh, the current exodus with our youth. Um, you know, we've got this routine where children are graduating from high school and they, they're chomping at the bit to get off Cape Cod because there aren't any opportunities here. Nobody, nobody pays. Um, so what we do have to do is we have to create opportunities to, to, to uh, you know, attract them to stay here and to raise their families in Cape Cod. So what I've proposed is putting a four-year university in here, taking Cape Cod Community College, pairing it up with an accredited university over the bridge, and I've already gotten the ball rolling and having some conversations with uh, uh, administration for some other universities over the bridge about this who love this idea. Uh, we take the solar panels that we've cut down all the, all the foliage uh, and we put those on the roofs, we put some on-campus housing on there. We then have an uptick in population in the off-season. What that does is that helps to sort of fertilize the hospitality market so some of the businesses that actually have to, are forced to shutter in the winter, we can keep them open. And with that, it's actually less expensive for those businesses to keep their doors open through the wintertime than it is to pay to an unemployment fund. So you're looking at maybe twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars saved by keeping your business open uh, over the course of the year with a skeleton crew. Uh, I also want to expand that partnership into the community with the arts community, the marine, the maritime. Expand our healthcare system. Make Cape Cod Hospital a teaching hospital by expanding our partnership with Brigham and Women's and Stewart. Um, I think these are all just common sense things to, to bring a stream of revenue and interest back to the Cape. Um, I mean, look at it. When, when the pilgrims landed here and, and, and uh, you know, we, we were the, the, the type of development, we were making speedboats for Hong Kong. I mean, we were manufacturing things at, at, at a Godspeed pace. And my question that I have to beg is, is why can't we go back to doing that again? And, the, and I never get an answer. Instead, I get excuses. Well, I believe that we can go back to doing that. I believe we have the talent. I believe we have the brains. I believe we have the personnel here. We can do a micro Silicon Valley East here. We've got a lot of tech stuff, startups. So, and I'm being told to stop. So I'm going to stop now. I could keep <laughs> rambling on here. All right. Steve, take uh, it so away. So, Steve, it is, it is right. your take turn now. What will you do uh, to uh, retain our vital young people here on Cape Cod? Thanks very much for the question. And certainly we covered some of the affordable housing um, aspects that, uh, that need to happen here. So that's, uh, that piece is crucial. I was just having a conversation with a, uh, uh, with a woman a couple nights ago um, at, a, at an event, and uh, she would like to be able to build on her property in order to keep her daughter and their family um, here on the Cape because of some of the zoning regulations, et cetera, is unable to, to do that. So housing is going to be a critical uh, component uh, of that. Uh, I think we need to tap further into a lot of the entrepreneurial 
um, aspects that are going on, on on Cape Cod. When I was referring to this event I was at uh, the other night, um, it was a group called E4ALL that uh, is involved all over the state, entrepreneurship. And there were Cape Cod entrepreneurs there pitching their businesses and some of them getting uh, uh, cash uh, awards for that. And there are literally hundreds of people trying new businesses here on Cape Cod in order to get established. And these were young people that were doing this. Um, and it was so refreshing to, uh, to be able to see that. Um, in addition, uh, I've been involved with Cape Cod Culinary Incubator, who's looking to put in a culinary kitchen, a community kitchen, that will further expand uh, options for that. There's a numerous opportunities uh, to expand uh, in the uh, food industry. Uh, we've seen examples where that's been successful also, uh, places like Commonwealth Kitchen uh, in Boston. So being able to uh, spur and, and create jobs through small businesses, which is really where uh, business is created here, uh, is important. Um, adding some people um, on campus is not going to make the same kind of difference when, uh, you know, in the summer the reason our folks stay open is because Cape Cod is three times larger than it is um, during other times of the year. So we need to look at some prudent ways in order to be able to expand and offer opportunity for our young people. Uh, let me just uh, follow up to that really quick too. Uh, I also want to uh, allude to the, the issue of uh, H2Bs and J1s and, and the issues that we're facing right now on a federal level with immigration and how that sort of uh, you know put the squeeze on our green economy here. And if you go into any of the restaurants here across the Cape and Islands, you'll notice that there are a lot of jobs available, but there weren't enough people to work them. And I think having a college campus here with summer programs would help to uh, help to alleviate that issue. It would keep full-time workers here. We wouldn't have to rely so much on uh, on, on migrant workers coming here uh, for the summertime. Um, so I think that's a good thing for businesses. Great comments. And it would also be pressure on the people that live and work here too. Um, the unemployment rate on the Cape in the summer right now, the most recent one is 3.7 percent, uh, which is uh, pretty strong. A couple ticks higher than the uh, the state, but in the off season when um, places do close. Um, unemployment rate, you know, here on the Cape, it goes over 7%. And you're going to bring in a lot of people who are going to compete with Cape Cod folks for, uh, for jobs and exacerbate that situation. What I'm talking about is actually creating the jobs first. So if you have to create the jobs to have the jobs. So you're saying places are closing and then the unemployment rate goes up. But I can, I'm talking about keeping the places open so that the jobs are available to people. That's all I'm saying. And I've said that you're not bringing enough people to keep places open as compared to what summer is. I'm going to disagree with him. That's the debate. <laughs> so let's, uh, we're going to move on and talk a little bit of the opioid crisis, of course, again, uh, one of those uh, hot button issues here on the Cape. Well known, often discussed uh, by both parties, um, but coexisting issues like mental health and treatments uh, for underlying conditions that often lead to addiction are often overlooked. Uh, what can you do to ensure mental health issues are better addressed along with the opioid crisis? Sure, there's a, a couple piece, pieces to that, and you're absolutely right, they, they go together. Um, strictly in terms of the uh, opioid crisis, one of the things that I will do within the first year of uh, being in office is call together a summit of anybody that has involvement in responding to the opioid crisis. Uh, parents, people dealing with addiction, police, hospital, etc. We all need to get together and be able to determine what resources are available, how best to manage those resources. Uh, the state has stepped up somewhat in some areas in terms of uh, helping out on that. Uh, Narcan is more available and that has saved lives. Um, and that gets publicized, but what doesn't get publicized is when the governor two budget cycles ago uh, cut funding for substance abuse counselors in all of our high schools. Uh, that's simply not acceptable right now. We need those, uh, those types of, of resources. Uh, going further into the mental health area uh, and, and addiction, uh, I'm an advocate of uh, single payer healthcare and I think we need to move so that we are treating with all types of uh, illnesses whether they be physical or mental the same way. Um, if heaven forbid somebody has a physical injury or somebody has cancer you get treatment and you get follow-up treatment um, on a continuous basis to deal with that. We don't deal with mental health issues the same way. Uh, we need to start doing that and provide those wraparound services. Um, for our uh, for our citizens here, I was fortunate enough to uh, attend a fundraiser for the Justice Resource Institute 
um, that's here in, uh, in Yarmouth Port, and they're doing phenomenal work. So I want, like I said, I want to bring in a lot of these resources together. There's no single answer uh, to, uh, to work with this and deal with this, uh, but together we can do better than what we're doing right now. Josh. Sure. Uh, so the opioid crisis uh, and, and just the substance abuse crisis in general is, is something that's very personal to me and I'm sure that uh, everyone in this room has a story. They either, either know somebody uh, or attached somebody currently that's been impacted by this. Um, let me tell you that I've gone, I, I've held someone's hand uh, through the system and through the, uh, the detox and the treatment process and let me tell you, the system's not set up for somebody to succeed and that's unfortunate. Uh, what I think we need to do is get to the root of the issues here. Um, we have to look at the real drug dealers here, who are the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, I'd like to work closer with the uh, Attorney General to uh, go after Big Pharma, to sue the Big Pharma companies, um, and to hold them accountable, as well as the prescribers. Now, the laws have gotten better. We've certainly tightened the noose around uh, a lot of the uh, physicians that we're prescribing, and I do know that there was some landmark legislation that was passed in, in the uh, legislature this year. Uh, you know, that, that help to curb uh, the, the promotion, the discount programs and things surrounding opioid medications. Um, but what I think we need to do is we also, again, need to look into combining Eastern and Western medicine. Uh, there's been a lot of research on cannabis. There's a detox facility in Boston by the Canadox. They had a 75% success rate within a month pulling people off of, uh, of, of opioids and getting them back on track and, and putting them through a program, getting them back to work and, and so that they can have a re-inclusion back into uh, society as, as uh, hardworking individuals with, with a, a clean life ahead of them. I think that's very important. Uh, and also when it comes to mental health care, because I know I'm being cut short here, um, you know, mental health care, we're not focused enough on it. Steve is right. In our public school system, we need more social workers and people who are accessible for mental health care. I'm moving to, to open a drug rehabilitation high school here in Cape Cod for middle school and high school level students. Um, it's something that I think would be great, an alternative learning environment for students that um, have issues uh, you know, that are carried over from um, maybe some of the interference they're dealing with at home, be it substance abuse or, or other. Um, all right, there we go. <laughs> Told to stop again. <laughs> it's, a, it's one of these, you know, these the issues I, are, are so large, oh, two yeah. minutes is very hard oh, to yeah. be able to contain uh, your thoughts. We'll so stay long. That? That's okay. <laughs> I'm curious yeah. as to how we're doing on time, please, but where please, are we please. in the hour? Hey. It's a lot of time. We have a lot of time? Yeah. Okay. Like a half an hour? Okay, great, awesome. So um, we'll, we'll, we can continue talking about uh, many issues. Um, <laughs> I'm going to throw one that's not on the list, um, but I do want to okay. talk about the economy of the Cape. Mm. Um, I think you know we've touched a little bit on that in the discussion that we've had, but you know, in really in terms of looking at the Cape as a year-round place, um, we obviously have a very robust uh, tourism industry. Uh, we have a robust healthcare industry. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the legislature, how you would work um, if elected, to help strengthen and bolster. Um, the, the local economy. And I think we're on Josh first for sure, this one. Sure, yes. sure, sure. Um, well, I think we need to put, you know, it's important to emphasize our confidence in the green economy and the local economy in the Cape. Um, you know, we talked about wage disparity and, uh, you know, the $15 minimum, wa minimum wage hike, which has uh, now been implemented uh, with a, a sort of uh, very conservative rollout uh, over the next few years. Um, and I think it's important that, you know, we sort of meet uh, wage demands with inflation. That, that, that's that's uh, critical. Uh, but, you know, I think it, 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 goes, it goes deeper. We got to be careful that, you know, for instance, when we allow corporations to come onto Cape Cod, we have to have them play by our rules here. Um, you look at Walmart, someone who increased their minimum wage to $15 an hour purposely to hurt smaller businesses. Um, to recruit that talent in and it, and it shutters other businesses. So we got to be very careful about that. Um, and it's important to invest into the independent sector. Again, um, what I was sort of alluding to before um, when we were talking a few minutes ago about um, putting some of the confidence in, technolo in a technology sector here on Cape Cod. We have a lot of small startup companies. Um, we've got a, a, a lot of, uh, we have a lot of um, bright young minds in, in, in the, uh, in the, in the maritime community, the, the marine biology communities and things here. Uh, we have plenty of uh, opportunities for coastal engineering and I mean the list goes on and on here on Cape Cod and I think that what we really need to do is up on Beacon Hill is get people to acknowledge the fact that those people do exist here on Cape Cod and that uh, maybe it's be part of their due diligence to reach out and, uh, and, and, and to include them into some of uh, the work that's going on statewide. Great. Steve? Thank you. 
You know, I talked before about the, uh, the value and inspiration, honestly, that, uh, that local entrepreneurs um, have down here. And I'll add uh, Live Love Local as a, another group that's really dedicated to uh, promoting uh, Cape Cod products and, and uh, new Cape Cod businesses also. But I want to focus on one thing very specific in terms of us moving towards a more year-round economy, and that's building the last mile of Open Cape. Uh, I commend Senator Sear for getting some additional money to do some degree of expansion in Barnstable and, and Provincetown uh, on that. Certainly our city and our town governments have benefited uh, by Open Cape. Uh, but we really need to look at building Open Cape out and make it available and accessible uh, throughout Cape Cod and, and uh, you know, specifically in terms of, of this district. The benefits of having a high speed fiber optic network in terms of what you can do and what you have access to here is immeasurable. Uh, we have seen in other communities outside of, of Cape Cod that when you can extend your season because you have access to that type of infrastructure, just being able to extend your season by a week means millions of dollars to the local economy. Uh, so it's an investment I think we need to make. Uh, I want to work with the towns and I want to work with state government in order to uh, put that funding together so that we have access to that type of network here. Yeah, I, I, I want to, I agree with you Steve on that. I think that it's important to have a, a high speed fiber optic network here in Cape Cod for a lot of businesses, especially people who want to move here and implement uh, uh, businesses on the Cape and through the off season. And I think we need to break up the Comcast monopoly. I think more competition is good. It forces people to do a better job and it lowers, uh, it lowers costs for everyone else. Everybody wins. Breaking so. up Comcast is yeah. an easy <laughs> cheer line. <laughs> the world are that easy. Yeah. Right? More funding for community media, so we like that. Uh, there we go. Absolutely. Right there as support well. that. Absolutely. <laughs> well played. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the kind of the, the current uh, legislature, the current, uh, you know, our, our, our Cape delegation obviously is uh, works very well together. Um, I think they're doing a, a decent job. Um, but I would love to hear um, your perspectives, and um, we'll start with you, Steve, on this one, on what our current legislature is doing well and what they're, uh, where you see uh, room for improvement. Okay. Um, you know, some good things. You know, some good things are, are happening. Uh, We've, uh, we've moved the chains forward a bit in terms of some environmental regulations, but the other side is not far enough. Uh, as I mentioned, the legislature, once prompted by citizen petition initiatives, then went along and, and moved things along. I, th I think the legislation needs to be more responsive to what's going on out in the uh, streets and what people are looking to have happen uh, right now. Uh, there needs to be more openness and transparency. Um, I've taken a transparency pledge to, uh, to support um, all roll calls uh, being published on the state website. If you went to try and look up uh, voting records of any member of the legislature, good luck to you on that. Uh, and if the legislature doesn't do that, I will publish my own uh, on there. So it's, uh, it's not acceptable to be able to do that. People feel like they don't have uh, involvement and engagement uh, in, uh, in what's going on up on Beacon Hill. Um, I will hold town hall meetings here in the district so that people stay in touch uh, with there. Again, a means of being able to reach out and maintain open communications with folks here in the, uh, in the district. So uh, I want us to work on a more progressive uh, tone. Like I said, move environmental action forward, move envi education reform uh, forward, and have more openness and transparency. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, overall the CAPE delegation has done some good work uh, here on the CAPE. Uh, certainly Senator Sear has been, uh, been a, a voice and, and, a, and a force to be reckoned with as a, as a freshman lawmaker. Uh, I've been very impressed with him uh, for the most part. And uh, certainly uh, Representative uh, Fernandez and, and Sarah Peake and, uh, you know, I mean, also saying Randy Hunt. Randy Hunt was starting to push the, uh, you know, the open, the open Cape. Uh, you know, he started that initiative. So I got to give him some credit for that and cross town and cross party lines. And I think that's what's important is that, uh, you know, we all need to work together. Uh, we need to work collaboratively. We get up to the legislature in, Bo legislature in Boston. We have a hundred different philosophies. Um, so I think that what we have to do is be able to keep that line, line of communication open. Uh, across the aisles, so that uh, you know, uh, we we can work together on uh, on some of the uh, some of the bigger issues at hand. Um, but there aren't any specific pieces of legislation I'm going to point out, uh, for better or worse. 
Um, but I will say that yes, we do need to uh, we do need to work harder, more collectively, and I do think that we need to be more aggressive, especially uh, for where we are in Cape Cod and where our standing is right now in Beacon Hill. Great. So whomever wins uh, the primary mm -hmm. election mm -hmm. uh, will have to face a popular candidate who is well-liked and respected in the community, run unopposed in the past. How will you campaign in the general election against Representative Tim Whalen? Well, um, is that for me? Or? Yes. Okay. First okay. Start right. on this one. Uh, well, listen. I, I realize Tim's a nice guy. He's a likable guy. But hey, I'm a nice guy too. Steve's a nice guy. So beyond that, uh, we have to look at uh, ideas. We have to look at policy. We have to look th at the way uh, you govern. And Mr. Whalen has uh, accomplished standard line items for a state representative. Uh, he, you know, he moved to uh, secure a million dollar grant for the Ford organization, which is wonderful. Um, I applaud that. I think that, 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 was, uh, that was great. But then he goes and he does, uh, you know, he puts this bonehead legislation out, uh, you know, that's going to allow firearms onto school grounds, which I completely disagree with. I think that is reckless and, and harmful. And to be honest with you, um, I think that his attention needs to be redirected to the people of Cape Cod and to, and to uh, you know, where we're suffering how the economy is, 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 is uh, flubbing, how, how the education system is broken, how health care, you know, we're still sending people over the bridge for PCPs. These are all things that he's turning a blind eye to. He'd rather go take pictures at fire stations, you know, and I just think that's ridiculous. Um, I, I think we need somebody who's going to be immersed in the community, to, out there talking to the people, listening to what the problems are, identifying what the problems are, going up to Boston and, to, and, and bringing it to the legislator and coming to some sort of an agreement that's going to benefit us here in Cape Cod. We're here to work for you, the people. We're all working together in this. I'm just a representative. I'm one voice for the rest of you. Um, I become a conduit. And let me tell you something. I, I will be a paragon. I will work. If, you, you know, the, just being here and, 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 and living on Cape Cod should give you the impetus enough to want to go up and work even harder. And, and that's what I will do as the next state representative, and that's what I'm going to do when I run against Mr. Whalen. And Steve, uh, how will you campaign in the Thanks. general election against Rep. Whalen? Great. And, and you know, I agree a lot with what uh, uh, Josh said. You know, Tim's a good guy. Tim's a friend. Uh, I said to Tim, I said, if it's uh, him and I running in November, I said, whatever happens the day after the election, we go have coffee and, uh, and uh, talk about the election and talk about the, uh, the future of First Barnstable uh, there. So, you know, I, I look forward to, uh, to uh, that conversation, being on the good side of that, uh, that conversation, and conversations with him uh, between September and uh, November. Uh, Representative Whalen didn't have to run on his record two years ago. Um, he now has two terms under his belt, and there are a significant number of issues uh, in terms of how he voted and what his focus is, is on in terms of legislation that is not always in the best, broadest interest of First Barnstable. Uh, Josh mentioned uh, firearms in school and, and specifically says, well, these are retired officers, they are still licensed, etc. But if you talk to any student or any teacher or any parent, about how you feel about someone having a firearm in school, they're not going to be for that. That's not in the interest of, uh, of the folks here in First Barnstable. So we need to have that discussion um, in, a, uh, in a respectful way and let the people of First Barnstable decide whose values and who ideals, whose ideals most reflect uh, the citizens here. So, uh, you know, you both mentioned uh, firearms in the schools mm -hmm. uh, in Rep. Whalen, and that makes me curious, of course, that uh, we are in a environment in which, you know, violence in schools is becoming a, a normal thing. Um, so how will you work, um, and we'll start, I, I believe I started with you last time. Yeah. Uh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. yes, you did. So how will you work to ensure that our schools are safe and that our children are protected and that our, not only our students, but our teachers and staff feel safe when they're going into our schools here Absolutely. on Cape Cod? It's a great, great question. And uh, I would turn to the example of uh, how well, um, in my own town, the uh, Brewster Police Department has worked with our uh, elementary schools and towns to, uh, to ensure uh, the utmost safety of the schools in our, uh, uh, in our town. Um, I think that's a great example, community policing at its best, to be able to um, understand the buildings, understand uh, the people, um, know everything that's going on in the community. And I think that uh, that, that model has certainly been reflected in uh, uh, Dennis Yarmouth and Barnstable also. Um, so uh, I would encourage that type of cooperation, anything I can do to, uh, to further that. 
And Josh? Yeah, I agree. The uh, see something, say something policy is always a good thing. Um, it is important to work with our local law enforcement officials who are doing a fantastic job. Um, knock on wood, thankfully we haven't had any incidents, uh, you know, serious incidents here on, on the Cape. Um, but, you know, when, when, in respect to guns, Listen, um, I understand the Second Amendment, and I realize that there are people who are responsible gun owners who use them to go to gun ranges or go out to, to hunt. Um, and we have very, very, uh, very tight gun laws here in Massachusetts, which you know I'm proud of. Um, but I think you know we need to go further. I'm looking. I would like to implement liability insurance for gun owners. Um, I think we're still letting gun owners off the hook uh, for irresponsibility. If uh, the, you know someone takes that gun and decides to be reckless with it. Um, you know, the blood's on that person's hands and not, not on the owner's. Well, I think we should trace it back to the owner and hold the owner accountable uh, for not, uh, you know, not controlling their firearm properly. So um, I think those are things that we need to look in, and I think that's another step further that we can go to ensure that uh, we're just that much safer here on Cape Cod and in Massachusetts. So you each share many of the same positions on uh, other issues as, as other Democrats, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Uh, you know, it's always the challenge when you're in a primary uh, that you share uh, lots of things. So what makes each of you, and Josh, we'll start with you, the better candidate to represent the first participle <laughs> district? Um, well, listen, it, it's like how I opened. I mean, I, I'm, I'm someone, I'm a visionary. I, I think big. It's always how I, I've, I've thought. I come from the arts uh, world, um, you know. That's what I, I graduated with a film degree. I've always, you know, I love the bravada. Um, but I also think that, you know, I, I've, I've traveled. I've, I've been to the Middle East. I've, I've stayed in Israel for a summer. I lived in Los Angeles. I lived in New York. I lived in Boston. I've been all over the place. I've seen many things. I've seen how, I've seen how things work. I've seen how things operate out there. Uh, and I've seen what works and what doesn't. And then I come back here and I see what we're doing and say, hey, we can do this a little bit better. We can do that a little bit better to make the first Barnstable uh, you know, uh, qualities improved. So um, I've got a lot of ideas, and I'm sure if you've visited my website, if you've looked at some of my literature, if you've talked to me, you know this. You know that I have a lot of ideas. Um, and that's the type of candidate you're going to get with me. Someone who's going to propose some groundbreaking legislation, someone who's going to propose the bold, ambitious, uh, you know, proposals. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to think nothing but big, and I'm going to break down the walls. I'm going to be what a mason is. I'm going to build this uh, district brick by brick. That's what I plan on doing here. So uh, that's the type of uh, representative I'm going to be. Um, and I hope to have your vote on September 4th. So. And Steve, what Great, makes thanks. you the better candidate? Now I have to define what a Leibowitz is <laughs> <laughs> on there. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. And um, as you heard at the very beginning, um, you know, my, uh, my heart and soul has been in the Democratic Party and community involvement for years and years. Uh, like I said, from the time I was a student at UMass Amherst, and it's actually kind of a funny story how I ended up running for that, and that a, uh, a, uh, I now view him as somewhat a nefarious poli-sci professor suggested to us, you know, students could run the town if you guys would go and uh, uh, out and vote. You could have every position in the town if you wanted. We thought that was kind of a pretty cool idea at the time. So we got involved in, in town meeting. When I moved back home and I was in Brookline, same thing. Uh, we had some significant community issues. I ran for and was elected to town meeting in, uh, in Brookline. Uh, when I've been here on, uh, on Cape Cod, uh, whether it's the Brewster Democratic Town Committee and holding numerous forums and issues with, uh, with candidates uh, there, uh, I've been engaged with that. Uh, being a member of the Brewster School Committee, being a member of the Brewster Affordable Housing Partnership. I know how our towns work. I have advocated and worked on specific legislation up on Beacon Hill, so I know what works. I know how to get things done up there, um, and I know that I have an agenda with actionable legislative items that can be done and help people out here in First Barnstable. So I feel like the closing statements may be a little repetitive after that, but I will uh, give you the opportunity to do that um, and perhaps touch on some of the issues that you think are the most meaningful um, to you as, as you continue your, your campaign. So with that in mind, closing statements. Sure. Um, well, thank you again for uh, Sarah. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and thank you to the Cape Cod Media Center and to uh, all of the town committees and the CIDC uh, for hosting this debate today. Appreciate it. Um, I guess in closing, I don't really, I know politics is kind of redundant, um, so <laughs> I will say that, you know, again, my core message here, it's all about building a year-round self-sustainable economy on Cape Cod um, and giving 
people opportunities again so that we don't have to go over the bridge, we don't have to relocate and uh, set up somewhere else. This is a special place here in Cape Cod. We need to preserve it and we need to progress. Uh, and I know that I'm the candidate that will be able to do that for you here in the first Barnstable district. Um, and I will work tirelessly for you. Um, I will work tirelessly for the district. I will spend my time here. I, you know, I went to the school system. I've swam these oceans for over 30 years, 35 years. I've drank the water here. Um, I know what Cape Cod's all about. I still have salt in my lungs from, you know, when I was uh, five. Um, and, you know, this, I, I chose to stay here. Um, I left and I came back and I chose to stay because I saw we were missing the boat on a lot of opportunities and we have a lot of untapped potential here in Cape Cod. And I think it would be really special to be a part of that and then to invite you all to be stakeholders in the corporation I want to build that we called Cape Cod. Thank you. Closing statements from you. Great. Thank you, Sarah, Cape Media, CIDC, our town chairs. Um, local Democrats, people that, uh, that lean that way but aren't registered Democrats. Um, I, I thank everyone for your involvement and your engagement um, in this campaign and in First Barnstable and Cape Cod in, uh, in general. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you're looking for someone that understands the role of what a state representative is, that has proposals that will work and will move the ball forward uh, even further than what we've seen right now on environmental issues, which I will lead on, on education funding reform, which I will lead on, on affordable housing and growing a stronger economy, which I will lead on. Uh, I have done it. I have worked with our towns. I have worked with our legislature uh, to do exactly that. Um, I look forward to being able to continue to do that. I look forward to uh, uh, primary day. I respectfully ask for your vote, and I thank you for watching. Well, thank you, Steve Leibowitz. Thank you, Josh Mason. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, you guys can. Well, all right. <laughs> well, and thank you, everyone, for coming again. Uh, September 4th is the primary election. They're all trying to run away, get back on the campaign no, trail. Uh, exactly. We're, we're still mic'd. Right. <laughs> you can't go anywhere. Uh, so please uh, don't forget to go out and vote on September 4th. And thank you all for joining us here at the Cape Cod Community Media Center for our first Varnstable Democratic candidate debate. Thank you very much. Thank you.